Good day folks, my name is Sean and this is Air Photography. This is DJI's latest drone, the DJI Mini SE. And whenever DJI releases a new drone, I like to create a beginner's guide to help new pilots get familiarized with the hardware, the software, and get them prepared for their very first flight. And I think a beginner's guide is especially important for the DJI Mini SE, just due to the fact that a lot of people are going to be choosing this as their very first drone due to its low cost. In this video, we're going to familiarize ourselves with the hardware, the app that we use to fly the drone. We're going to talk about charging up the batteries, what type of memory to use, and everything you need to know to ensure a successful first flight. Now these beginner guides can get a little bit long, so it might be a good idea to watch it in different segments, perhaps even save it, and that way you can always come back and reference it later. So with all that said, let's just jump right in and get started. So this is the DJI Mini SE. It's DJI's latest drone. This is a sub 250 gram drone, and that's very important in many countries. For example, in Canada here, because this drone is under two 249 grams you don't have to get a drone pilot certificate and you don't have to register the drone with the government when it comes to where you can fly the drone it also has less regulations now that's different in every country so make sure before you fly a drone in your country you take some time to read the rules and regulations and what applies in your area this drone is very affordable it comes in at 299 dollars now that's for the base package they also have a fly more kit which is what i have here in the base package you get the drone a controller and one battery with the fly more kit you get everything that comes in the base package plus you get a case two spare batteries and a charging hub it doesn't matter what kit you have you can still follow along because i'll be going over both aspects so let's go ahead and we'll take the drone out of the box here and we'll see what all comes inside the package as mentioned this is the fly more combo so if you have the base kit yours is going to be packaged a little bit different so the first thing you can see here it does come with a nice case when you purchase the fly more combo we'll open it up here now yours is going to be laid out similar but it's going to be all wrapped up i've already have mine out and flying it so yours is going to have white plastic wrap over all the components but let's go over everything here that comes inside the package first of all we're going to have our remote controller and we're going to go a little bit more into depth on each component as we go along the next thing we have here is the charging hub so this is specific to the fly more combo if you have the base package you will not have this charging hub in the box and as you can see here we already have two spare batteries loaded in the charging hub the third battery is pre-installed in the drone now underneath where the controller was you can see we have all our literature it's a good idea to flip through them because it does contain some important information. At the back here, under where the charging hub was, we have all the accessories. We have an extra set of control sticks for the controller. We have one complete spare set of propellers. We have two extra data cables. These are how you connect your phone to the controller. And we get some spare ones because they have different ends depending on what type of phone you have. And we'll take a closer look at that here in a minute. We have a little screwdriver and we use this for changing out the propellers. Then we have two charging cables. We have a USB-C cable for charging the drone or by charging up the batteries in the charging hub. And we also have a micro USB cable and this is used to charge the controller. And then of course here we have the drone. Now yours is going to be covered in stickers and we'll talk about that a little bit here in a minute. So let's take a look at the three main components here that you get in the Flymore kit. We're going to start with the charging hub. Now again if you have the base kit you're not going to have this so you can just fast forward through this part. When you bought the Flymore kit you get two spare batteries and as you can see they're already pre-installed there. To eject the batteries there's a little button right underneath there if you can see that you have to press that in and then pull them out as you can see there's spaces for three batteries so you can charge three batteries up in this charging hub we're going to talk a little bit more about charging here in a minute but uh, let's just take a look around the unit here uh, you can see we have a power button basically what that does is if you press it when the batteries are installed it's going to show you the charge level of each battery we have a USB-C port and that's how we charge up the batteries when they're installed but as you notice here we also have a USB-A port and the reason being this is considered a two-way charging hub so when you have your batteries installed this can act as a power bank you can plug in something like a gopro or a smartphone and charge it up using the batteries from the drone it is a real handy device if you did purchase just the base kit and you want the charging hub you can purchase these separately the one that comes with this package is the exact same one that comes with the dji mini 2 so i will include a link to it down in the description of this video if you do want to check it out we'll put that aside for now uh, but we will be coming back to that when we talk about how to charge everything up so let's take a look at the controller here next you can see we have two antennas at the top there when you're flying you want to fold them out like that and when you're flying the drone you always want the flat end of the antennas facing the drone so you can adjust them depending on how you're holding your controller and it's a good idea to always make sure you're facing in the direction you're flying the bottom folds out and this is how we're going to mount our phone here in a minute as you can see we have our control sticks stowed down inside there and that's perfect for travel when you're going to be throwing this in a camera bag or something you don't have to worry about damaging them they just pop out 
and screw in. And they are identical, so it doesn't matter which side you put them on. Let's take a look at some of the buttons on the controller. You can see over here on the very left hand side, we have our return to home button. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on. Over on the right hand side, we have our power button. And that's what we use to power on the controller. On the left hand side here, you can see we have this data cable. And those are the data cables that I showed you at the beginning of this video. When you buy the drone, it's going to already have a lightning version pre-installed. But if you use an Android phone, it does come with a USB-C connector or even a micro USB connector, depending on the type of phone you use. You can see here, this is where it connects. And if we pull that cable out, you can see there that we have a micro USB port. And that's how we charge the controller up by using one of those cables that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And we'll go over that a little bit more here in a minute. Now, one important tip here for you. This port can be easily damaged. It's very important when you go to plug that micro USB cable in, make sure you have it lined up properly because it's happened numerous times where people put them in backwards or upside down and they end up snapping that little plate off inside and then the controller needs to be sent back into DJI for repair. So always pay very close attention to that. At the back of the controller, you can see we have this dial. That's how we tilt the camera up and down. On this side here, we have a shutter button that will either start recording and stop recording. On the other side here, we have, you can see a button with a picture of a camera on it. That'll switch us back and forth between video mode and photo mode. So that is basically the controller. And as we move along here, I'm gonna show you how to mount your phone and get that all set up. But we'll continue here with the drone. Now, as mentioned, your drone is going to be covered in stickers and you're going to have some paper bands around the propellers. So at this point, it's a good time to go ahead and take that off. To unfold the drone, basically, we're going to fold the front arms out first and then the back arms. And the reason why that's important, if you unfold the back arm first, you can see you can no longer unfold the front arms. So basically, when you're getting ready to fly, you do the front arms first and then you unfold the back arms. This is our gimbal protector, and it's a good idea to have that on when you're traveling with the drone. And you can pop it off just by pressing down on that little tab, and you can see it comes right off. Below that, we have our power button, and we have four LED lights to signify how much charge is in the battery. Here we have some positioning sensors, and those are used for indoor flights or low altitude flights. It helps measure the distance from the ground. Below that, we have a LED status light, and it will flash in different ways depending on what the drone's doing. At the back here we have a USB-C port and that's used for charging up the battery when it's installed in the drone. It can also be used to update the firmware. And then right beside that we have a micro SD card. That's where we insert our memory card. And you do have to purchase your own memory card. It doesn't come with one. And we're going to talk about that again here in a minute when we go to install one. This back door opens up. And as you can see, there is one battery pre-installed in the drone when you get it. Again, just like the charging hub, there's a little button there. You have to press that in right underneath and it will come right out. So that's basically a quick rundown of the hardware that comes with the package. Now we're going to get things ready for our first flight and there's a few things we need to do. First of all, we need to install some memory. We also need to download the DJI Fly app. That's the companion app that runs on our smartphone and we'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, but first of all, let's go ahead and we'll put some memory in. Uh, right now I have a 64 gigabyte card, but you can put many different types of memory cards in there. Um, usually I do fly with a 128 gigabyte card. You just want to make sure you have a nice fast card. DJI on their website has a list of compatible memory cards. I'll include down below in the description of this video links to the ones that I do recommend for this drone. But basically to install it, we're just going to take our memory card with the graphic side facing up. And we're just going to insert it into the back and then just push it in until it clicks. So now we have our memory installed, we need to get the batteries charged up so we can get ready to update the firmware and then go for our first flight. I'm gonna show you two different ways to charge the drone up. First of all, if you don't have the Flymore kit, you're not gonna have this charging hub, but I'll start with it first. Basically what you're gonna do is insert all three batteries. Just make sure they're clicked in good. Now these batteries for safety shipping purposes, they're in a hibernation mode and they need to be activated. Basically to activate them, it's as simple as just plugging them into power. Then they'll automatically activate and start to charge. Now to charge the batteries in the charging hub, we're going to take the USB-C cable that came with the package, plug it into the USB-C port. And you're going to notice right away, this does not come with a charging brick. It's kind of a common thing that companies are now doing. I guess they figure everybody has tons of them kicking around. 
So all you're going to want to do is plug that into any USB-A port. Most of us have these kicking around from our smartphones. It's all the same, so it doesn't matter what type you plug it into. If you are going to purchase one, it is a good idea to get a higher wattage one. And again, I'll link down in the description to one that I recommend to use. So it's as simple as just plugging it in and plugging it into the wall. These status lights will start to blink as it's charging. Now it's very important to note when using this charging hub, it's not going to charge all three batteries at the same time. These are considered intelligent batteries, so it can tell what the charge of each battery is. And what it's going to do, it's going to start charging the battery that has the most amount of charge in it, and then it'll go to the next one, and then finally it'll charge the one with the lowest amount of charge. And the reason it does that is so you can get up and flying quicker. If you have a battery that just you're topping off, it'll start to charge it when it's done. You can pull it out and it will continue charging the other ones. You don't have to have all three batteries in there while charging. Now with that said, if you don't have the charging hub, again you're going to need some form of charging brick. And what you're going to do is take your battery, we'll open up the back door, make sure you line up the leads at the top there to the leads at the top of the drone. Just press it in until it clicks. Now we're just going to simply plug into the USB-C port on the back and then again plug that right into a wall and it's going to charge the battery up in the drone. And whether you have the Flymore combo with the charging hub, you can still charge up your batteries that way as well. And it's actually sometimes convenient to do it this way, especially if you're charging from a power bank. You can plug this directly into a power bank and charge up the drone that way as well. So that's perfect if you're going to be doing any kind of camping or hiking and you're away from traditional power, you can still keep your drone batteries charged up. Now of course we need to charge up the controller as well. So as mentioned, we're just going to unplug that side data cable. We're going to plug in the micro USB cable that came with the kit. And again, be very careful to make sure you line it up properly. And just like the drone batteries, you're going to need it any kind of charging brick. And it might be hard to see, but there's four LED lights there at the top and those will light up to signify that it's charging. So now at this point, we're ready to download the DJI Fly app. We have everything charged up. We have memory installed. So you're going to want to go to the app store of whatever type of phone you use. On an iPhone, which is what I'm using, you're going to go to the app store and search for DJI Fly. You can see I have it installed there. It's that little gray icon. So that's what you're going to want to put in. We're now going to mount our phone into the controller. What I like to do is first plug in the data cable, just like that there, and slide that end in first. And then just bring it around and make sure it's centered in there. Now at this point we're going to power on the aircraft and the controller. So what we're going to do here is we're going to double press the power button. DJI uses a sequence of a quick press and then a long press. So for example, I'm going to do a quick press and then long press and hold it. As you can see there, we hear a little tone and now these LED lights are flashing. And those flashing lights are important because when they go solid, that's going to signify that it's now connected to the drone. So now we're going to power on the drone and we're going to use the same method. We're going to do a quick press and then a long press and hold. And you can see there the lights have come on and we hear that little tone. You're going to notice your gimbal is going to do a calibration. It's going to be flopping around a bit. That's quite normal. Now the drone is just connected. As you can see, these lights are now solid. And you also know that the drone is connected when this light at the back here is blinking green. Depending on what kind of light you're in, sometimes it does look a little yellow. Before we continue too far here, I do want to show you how to power them off. It works exactly the same way. You do a quick press, then a long press and hold, and that will power it off. And you do the same for the controller. Quick press, then a long press. You'll hear that tone, and then it powers off. So let me go ahead and I'll power things back on. Now I'll just wait for them to connect again. So what we're going to do here now, we're going to go ahead and launch the Fly app. Now as you can see, it's come right away to connect to the drone. It says go fly. Now before we can do our first flight, there's a couple things we need to do. We need to activate the drone. All DJI products need to be activated when they're brand new and used for the first time. We also have to update the firmware. There's firmware inside the controller, the drone, even the batteries that all need to be updated. So let's go ahead and we'll activate the drone first. You can see there, there's a button that says activate. All you're going to do is press on that and it's going to connect to the server and activate the drone. Now, before you can do that, there is one step. If you don't already have a DJI account, you will need to create one and log in. Once you have logged in, then you can go ahead and activate the drone. It only takes a few seconds to activate and you'll get a confirmation once you've had a successful activation. Now, once the drone is activated, we will need to update the firmware. So to update the firmware, you should be getting a pop-up box here at the side stating that there is some firmware to be updated. You can actually click on it and it will expand and tell you what's being installed during the firmware update. Now, if yours isn't saying firmware, it's talking about the FlySafe database. 
go ahead and update it first. Then the message to update the firmware will pop up after that. So let's go ahead here. We'll update the firmware. It's going to download it first. And once it's downloaded, it will start to install. It can take a bit of time. It can take upwards of five minutes to install the firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and skip through this part. So I'm going to go ahead and reposition the camera here so we can take a better look at the fly app while we go through it. I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough, just some important things you need to know before you take your first flight. So this is the main interface when you launch the fly app. It has various components to it. We have our album where we can go in and view some of the footage that we've taken and photos we've taken. But down here in the bottom left hand side, you can see it says go fly. That's how we're going to go into what's called the camera view. And that's what we're going to be doing when we go to take our first flight. So let's go ahead and we'll click on that. You can see here it comes to the main interface and it gives us a lot of information. Plus it gives us our visual feed so we know where we're flying. At the very top here, you can see right now we have a image of a satellite. It's red because we're not connected to enough satellites. Once we've connected to 12 satellites, it will turn green. Now, during this part of the video, it's not going to turn green because I'm indoors. You have to be outside for it to connect to all the satellites. And it's definitely important you want to make sure that you don't take off until that turns green and you're connected to at least 12 satellites. Right beside that, you can see there is a number there and it tells you how many you're currently connected to. Right beside that, we have our RC strength. So while we're out flying around, it's going to tell us what the strength is, the connection strength between the drone and the controller. Beside that, we have our battery information. And right now it's not giving us all the information because we're not up in the air. And I'll show you that a little bit more in detail once we get up in the air and we're flying. But we can actually click on that and it's going to give us even more information. As you can see, it gives us information like how much time before the drone automatically returns to home. The drone will automatically start to return to home when it gets down to a certain percentage. And that number will adjust depending on how far you are away. These drones have intelligent flight batteries. So it knows how far away it is and how much power it needs to get back to where it took off from. It also tells you how much until a forced landing. And it will also tell you how much until the battery is completely depleted. That tells you what the state of the drone is in. And because we're not connected to satellites, it's telling us to take off with caution because we don't have the satellites to help hold the position. That status message will change once you're completely connected to satellites and tell you that you are safe to take off. We can also click on that and it's going to give us some more information. Again, it's going to give us some GPS information. It's going to tell us our return to home altitude, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And it also gives us some of our flight limits, how high we can go and how far away from the controller we can fly. We can adjust these settings right from within this menu, but we can also do it within the settings. So we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Over on the very left hand side here we have our takeoff button and that will change to a landing button once we're up in the air. At the bottom here we have very important telemetry data that'll tell us how high we are and it'll also tell us how far we are away from the drone. Definitely a good idea to keep an eye on that because in most countries we're not legally allowed to fly more than 400 feet or in Canada here 120 meters. And you can see here we have a picture of a map, a little icon, but we can make that map bigger by clicking on it, you can see it comes up a little bit bigger. Now I'm not connected to the internet here, so it's not gonna pull up the map. But basically it shows us where the drone is, where the controller is, and it will also show us where our home point is. When we take off and we power on the drone, it's gonna set a home point. And that way if you're out flying and say you become disconnected because you've flown too far, the drone is gonna automatically come back to that home point. So that's a good way to check to make sure your home point is set to where you are. And again, we can make that even bigger. You can see we can bring it up like that. But again, I'm not connected to any kind of internet right now, so it's not gonna pull up the map. Uh, the other useful information is on here. It shows you your flight path. So if you ever get disoriented up in the sky and uh, for whatever reason you don't wanna use the return to home, you can just look at the path that you've taken and just follow it back to where you took off from. To exit out of the map view, we just click on our visual feed there and you can see it goes back. And if we want to minimize that because we find it's in our way while we're flying, there's a little tiny arrow in the bottom left-hand corner. We can just press on that and it will go away. Over here on the right-hand side, this gives us information about our storage. You can see it shows us how much video and photos we can take depending on what mode we're in. It tells us our resolution in frames per second. By default, I think you're gonna be set to 1080 by 30. It's probably a good idea to up that to 2.7K. That's the maximum resolution that this drone can film at. And you want the best quality of video you can get. To change that, we just click on it, and you can see at the top here, we can switch back and forth. So that's usually what I like to film at with a drone like this, 2.7K at 30 frames per second. Right beside that, we have our EV compensation. Basically, this will brighten or darken the image, depending if things look a little overexposed. If it's a really bright day and things are too bright, 
we can darken it down as you can see we can just move that slider but we can go the other way and you can see it'll darken things down a little bit most of the time if you leave it at zero that's going to give you a good exposure if you're a camera person and you want to get really creative you can see here we have a button that says auto if we click on it that's going to allow us to set all our own manual settings you know we can change things like iso shutter speed the white balance if you're new to all this i wouldn't worry about that right now that's always something you can play around with down the road once you've learned to fly the drone so we'll put it back to auto there on the right hand side here it's kind of hard to see because of this arm we have our gallery button we can click into that and that's going to show us all the stuff we have pre-recorded on the phone but uh, right now it's empty above that we have our shutter button and again, that's how we can stop and start recording. Or as mentioned, we can use the button on the back of the controller. Above that, we have a picture of a film strip. That's actually signifying that we're in video mode right now. Again, if we use the button on the back, you'll see that change. It goes to a square. That means we're now in photo mode. And we can switch back and forth on the back. For example, right now we're in photo mode. If we hit the record button, that's going to put us in record mode. If we want to go back to photo mode, we can get, go ahead and press the photo button. We can press it once without it actually taking a photo. Now that we're in photo mode, if we press the photo button, it's going to take a photo. If we go to video mode by pressing it once, it's just going to switch us to video mode and it won't start recording until we press it a second time. You can see there it is now recording. Press it again and that'll stop. So it is easier to use those buttons than trying to press the buttons on the side there because they are kind of covered by that arm there and it's hard to get in there. As mentioned, we also have the gimbal control wheel at the back. As you can see on the picture here, you, we can turn the camera up or turn it down to face down. So that's basically it for the main interface. Uh, there are some other settings that we can change. Now I'm not gonna go through all of them because there is a lot there, but it is a good idea to go through the menu system and get yourself familiarized with it. So let's go ahead and we press those three dots there at the top. You can see we have some sub menus along the top. We have safety, control, camera, transmission, and about. Now the safety tab is the main one that I do want to show you. Uh, there are a couple things here that you need to know about. The first is we can set our max altitude and it's a good idea to leave it at 120 meters because that is the legal altitude that we can fly. Now depending on the airspace you're in sometimes that's even lower depending on what country you live in. So it's a good idea again to make sure you know the regulations and then you can go ahead and adjust that slider accordingly. We can also set the max distance. If you slide it all the way to the right hand side, it's going to be no limit. That means you can go as far as the connection will allow you. If you don't want to go very far away, you could set it, say, to 100 or a couple hundred meters. And that way, while you're learning to fly, you're not going to accidentally get too far. The next is our auto return to home altitude. Basically, what happens there is if the drone disconnects from the controller for whatever reason, the drone is going to stop. It's going to try and reconnect, but if it can't, it's going to rise up to that predetermined altitude. Right now, mine is set at 100, and I believe that is the default. And then it's going to come home at that altitude, and then come straight down above where it took off from. So it is a good idea to leave that up fairly high, and that way you don't have to worry about hitting any obstacles on the way home. Because this drone does not have any sort of obstacle avoidance detection, you want to make sure that the return to home altitude is higher than any obstacle around you. For example, trees, buildings, anything like that. Now, one thing I did forget to show you here, which we'll take a quick look at now. There's three flight modes on this drone. There's something called normal mode, sport mode, and sin smooth mode. And we change that up at the top here. Right now it says it's in P mode. So if we click on that, you can see now it's uh, transferred to sport mode. If we click on it again, it's now in C mode. That's the sin smooth mode. And again, we can go back to P mode. P mode, I don't know why it says P mode, but basically that's your normal speed. Sport mode, it just allows you to fly a little bit faster. Sin smooth mode flies a little bit slower. And that way, if you're really trying to get some nice cinematic shots, you don't have to worry about the drone being too jerky up in the air. So basically that's it. We've gone over the fly app. So we're ready now to take our first flight. So let's head out and I'll go over some tips for your very first flight. So we're just out here now and we're gonna get ready to take our first flight. If this is going to be the first time you fly a drone, I highly recommend that you find a nice open field or park. Something with not a lot of obstacles or people around, just so you can get a good feel for the drone. You can see we have the drone out in front of us there on a landing pad. If you don't own a landing pad, it is something you might want to consider investing in. They're not a lot of money. You can pick them up fairly inexpensively on Amazon. So what we're going to do here is tap on the Go Fly here, that uh, blue button there. 
At this point we have the firmware updated, the batteries charged, everything ready to go. So all we have to do is tap on go fly and that's going to take us into the camera view. When you go to take off there's two ways you can do it. On the very left hand side of the screen you can see we have that little arrow pointing up and uh, we can tap on that. You can see it gives us an option to take off. We just have to press and hold. The drone is going to power up there and as you can see it's just going to hover at about a meter. Now to land, you can see on the right hand side that takeoff button turned to an H with an arrow on it. That's actually our land and our return to home. If we were a fair distance out and we press on it, you can see I'll press on it here. You can see it just says land. If we were out farther, like say 100 meters, you would have two options. One would say return to home and one would say land. But we're just going to go ahead and hit land. We could press and hold. And you can see the drone is now going to go down and land. It's a little off of where it took off from, but uh, that's okay. So that's one way to take off and land. The other way is to use a stick command, and it's usually the way I like to do it. And we can do so by pressing the sticks down, and then pressing in. You can see that the propellers start up, and then to take off, all we do is press up on the right hand stick, or left hand stick I should say. And you can see again, once you press up and the drone takes off, you let go, and again it's just going to hover at about a meter. And to manually land it, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to hold down on the left-hand stick. And you can see the drone is going to go down. And it lands. So those are two different ways you can take off and land. So let's go ahead and we'll take off again here and we'll uh, take a look at some of the control movements. So again, sticks in. And we'll take off. So you can see the drone in front of me there. Hopefully it's uh, the screen's bright enough that you can see the control sticks. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to show you a few of the movements and what the control sticks do. We're going to start with the right hand side. And this one does uh, two movements, well four movements total. We have front and back and side to side. So if I push the control stick forward, you can see the drone there is moving forward. If I pull the control stick down, the drone is going to move backwards. We can also go side to side with the drone. Let's see if I push it over to the left, the drone is going to move to the left. If I pull it over to the right, it's going to move to the right. Left hand stick controls our altitude and our yaw. Yaw is basically spin. So if I push up, you can see the drone's going up. If I pull down a bit, the drone's coming back down. If we go side to side, the drone is going to yaw or spin. You can see that there. It's yawing to the left. If I go the other way, it's going to yaw to the right. So as you're flying the drone, you're going to use a combination of everything, right? You're going to change your altitude, you're going to go up, you're going to go down, you're going to move the drone from side to side, but you're also going to be spinning it and moving it in different directions. And that'll just take some time flying around, getting some stick time, and uh, you'll pick that up pretty quick. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to just send it out for a little bit of a flight here give us some altitude so let's uh, yaw to the left here you can see I'm using my left stick and we're spinning it around we can yaw to the right and depending on how far over you press the stick it's either gonna go really fast or you can do it really slow and again that'll just take some time to get a feel for the sticks which will allow you to get smooth movements now I'm going to spin it back around and we're going to head out a little bit here. I'm going to show you the return to home. I'm going to head out to about 200 meters and again as we talked about earlier you use the uh, information on the bottom left hand corner. That's all your telemetry data and uh, you can see that uh, you know we're out 219 meters and we're 16 meters up. Let's just raise our altitude a little bit. I should have maybe shown you this first but let's click on the map there. We'll bring it to full screen. You can see the path that I've taken while flying, but you can also see our home point. That blue dot there is us, the controller, and uh, the H is the home point. If we go to the other side, you can see the blue triangle is the drone. And as we yaw it around, you can see I'm going to spin it around here. You can see that the way the triangle is pointing changes. So if you ever get lost up in the sky and you just want to find your way back home, you can see there it has a nice uh, red line there, just an easy way for you to find your way back home.
But what we're going to be doing is using the return to home feature. And again, I'm just going to show you something here. Remember how we could have set our return to home altitude? Right now it's set at 100 meters. I'm actually going to lower that down a little bit to 66. Well, actually, let's take it down to 60. So now we're going to hit return to home. And we can either use the button on the controller, that H there on the left hand side, or we can use the button on the screen. Let's use the button on the screen so I can show you what it does. We'll press on it. And you can see there, like I mentioned earlier, we either have a land. That would land the drone right where it is. We don't want that, but we want it to return to home. So we're going to press and hold to return to home. And what it's going to do is go up to the altitude that we have set at 60 meters. And then it's going to come directly home to us and then start to descend. And the reason you set that return to home altitude is you want it set taller than the tallest obstacle around you. So if there's trees around you, 40 meters or buildings, you want to make sure that you have it set taller than what the obstacles are around you. So you can see here it comes here. Now I might have to manually take control of it because I do have some trees around me. But if we didn't do anything, what it's going to do is just descend and land right pretty well where it took off. It might be off by a few feet, but uh, generally it'll land where it took off from. And you can also turn the camera down. That's what we're going to do now. And you can see we're right over a tree. So I'm going to stop that. I'm going to hit cancel on the uh, left hand side there. I'm going to bring it over a little bit. And uh, there's an open spot there. So now I'm just going to bring it down. So there we go there. The drone came home. I did end up bringing it in manually because it was getting close to the tree. So it's always really important to keep an eye on the drone, even when you're using return to home, because there's no obstacle avoidance on this drone. So it could potentially fly directly into a tree or land on something you don't want it to. So at this point, you know, as a new pilot, you're just going to want to get out and spend some time on the sticks. Uh, get a feel for it, how it moves. If you're feeling a little bit of anxiety or a little nervousness, you know, that is normal, uh, but that will go away and uh, it'll just be pure enjoyment. So let's go ahead and we'll land it here. I'm gonna bring it back a little bit. Let's land it down on the pad. And there we go there. So that's basically it. It's really easy. Uh, the way DJI makes her drones, they're so intuitive and they're reliable and they just fly really well. Just keep in mind when you're flying, if you ever panic or you're getting too close to something, just let go of the sticks. The drone is just going to stop right where it is and it's going to be held in place by GPS. But in the event of an emergency, just let go of the sticks. The drone is going to stay right where it is. You can get your composure and then figure out the best way to maneuver it away from wherever, whatever trouble you're in. Well, folks, that's basically it for my beginner's guide. We've gone over all the hardware, the software. We've taken our first flight. I've given you a few tips along the way. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of drone tips and tutorials whenever there's new releases. If there's any changes to the software, the Fly app, or new firmware updates, I tend to cover them as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you got some value out of it. I would appreciate a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.